I'm Colin Gray, I'm a TIBCO data scientist and we're going to do some analytics on cycling today and um, we're going to be using the TIBCO team, Silicon Valley Bank uh, professional cycling teams stats and analysis and as part of that and one of the key things about when you're doing analytics is it's always really important to get the actual story and information about what happened during the race. So. I'm really pleased to have Lauren Stevens here from the TIBCO uh, team, SVB team, professional cyclist, uh, and to give us sort of an input and a nice oversight of, of what these races, how they transpire and what happens and how that shows in the data. So thanks, Lauren, for joining us today. Um, could you start by introducing yourself, um, you know, a bit about how you joined the team and, and, and your career so far um, with the TIBCO team? Yep, um, I'm Lauren Stevens and I began racing with Team TIPCO Silicon Valley Bank in 2013. So I've been with the team for quite a while and really excited um, to have this engagement with TIPCO with the dashboard. And before I was, um, before I was racing full time, I was a math teacher. So the yep. analytics definitely interest me and I'm excited to see where this goes. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you've got quite a numerical background. Yeah. <laughs> um, does that, has, has that, have you used that at all in your career, you know, with that sort of mathematics background, has that sort of been something you've always utilised, um, looking at the information, maybe a bit more than others? Yeah, definitely. The logic side of math is what really intrigues me. Mm. Um, and so analysing courses and preparing um for courses by looking at the terrain and different things like that um, yeah. have always intrigued me. And um, I also do a little coaching on the side. Um, mm -hmm. So I get to dive into other athletes status. Okay, cool. That sounds great. Um, so one of the, the races from last year that we're going to analyze is the Tour of Flanders. And that's quite, I think, an iconic race um, and that you and the team took part in. Um, you know, it was is that before we start looking at it, is that a diff, quite a different race, or how did you find that race versus others on the the European circuit? Yeah, I mean, Flanders is one of the most difficult races that we do all year. Right. Um, it's one of the most exciting races because it's one of the most iconic races, hmm. um, and it's also one of the many races that we do now alongside with the men. So I think it just ups the level of excitement when you have the men and the women racing at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. So let's dive into some of the stats and have a look um, and sort of see what stories we can find. So to give people a little bit of background, what we've done here is we've pulled together some of the stats from the cyclists in the team um, from some of the races last year. And we've done an analysis, we're going to compare them. So we've got some of the, the riders, we've got yourself, Lauren, and some of your teammates who, who rode there. And of course, we've got the different races that we've uploaded the data for. And one of the ones is, of course, Flanders here. So in this, in this dashboard that we're working on, um, you can delve into the, the individual riders or you can look at our race. So we'll, we'll do a little tour of the, the Flanders race data to just now. So we'll just click on this. So what we've got here, just to, to describe to people, is a variety of statistics. You've got a map um, of the track or, or the circuit and where it was raced, and you can see the arrows and the, the, the four racers data. We've got here Lauren, Kristen, Emily, and Nina in the direction of travel. So we're at the start of the race. Uh, but down here, what we've got is each rider's profile. You can see like their power uh, output as a percentage and the altitude here in grey of the actual course. So you can get, you can see just how undulating this course is. It looks like quite a, um, a tough course, like you were saying. And we've got some distributions about power output and, and heart rates up here. So when you see data more to the right, you know, it means more power output, higher heart rates, you know, more intense effort. So uh, Lauren, looking at the stats, you know, as an analyst, there's a few things that jump out at me but it'd be really interesting to see and hear some of your insights about what they mean as well. Um, you know, the, the first thing that really jumps out is, is Emily's power profile here versus, you know, Nina's, yourselves and Kristen's. 
um, right at the start. That this is this is very different. So what what's happening here? Does that does that make sense in terms of the race uh, as it unfolded in reality? Yeah. So in the in this particular race, Emily went into the early breakaway. So you can see there where her power becomes much higher than yeah. ours, and then even stays at a much higher like steady level, hmm. uh, where ours is going up and down a lot more. So normally. Normally in the breakaway, the ride is uh, much more steady, um, and you okay. can definitely see that from Emily's profile. Yeah, that, that's really clear because I, I almost wondered had uh, had we read the data in wrong or something because it was so it's so different. Um, like you say, that steady profile, whereas you know um, the rest of the team is much more up and down. So if we zoom in and actually uh, look at that a little, little bit more, you can see Emily's break break away here but actually you can see that she's a bit ahead of it, the the group that you're riding in and um, with the team and you can see here as well that there's her power output is more to the right so it sort of shows that she's putting this more intense effort in and um, how does that help in terms of strategy what's what is the strategy there of why you join a breakaway group yeah a couple different things can happen um one could be that when the race does break up that we have can guarantee that we have a rider up there Right, okay. um, because they've already gone ahead. Um, another is just to be a protection that um, that we do have a rider up there, and we don't have to do as much work in the right. back in the main group. Um, and then there's always that chance that the breakaway stays away, um, mm -hmm. and for sure that's the hope of everyone that they'll get their chance, and that is one of the reasons. Yeah, so it's sort of building a long-term strategy, covering different bases about how the ride, the race might unfold. Okay, you know another thing. Then I notice here again, um, looking at these power outputs, is you know, well, Emily's, you know, is quite, it's not not static, but quite, uh, you know, not a lot of changes. Here we see like a large spike again for um, for Nina at this stage, and you can see like your profile and Kristen's is going up as well, but not quite as much as Nina's. Do you know what, what was happening there, why, why her output is sort of that bit higher? Because um, if we look at that stage of the race, so if I just zoom to there, you can see um, Nina's here at the front, but she's still with the group, but yet her output's quite high. So it's Nina's safe. job that day was um, to protect me and make sure that I was where I needed to be. So right, okay. I would be on her wheel, so I'm saving energy. Um, Another reason is that Nina is more of a sprinter type. So her power right. is going to be much punchier um, than my power or Kristen's power. Um, so she's going to utilize her strengths um, and just like we're utilizing our strength of being a more steady rider. Yeah, I, you know, that makes a, a lot of sense. And, and you can actually see just if we zoom in the map, you can see that um, assuming the GPS is accurate <laughs> enough <laughs> it may not quite be accurate enough but Nina's slightly ahead lead and, um, and you're sort of just right beside uh, Kristen so she's sort of taking that lead again you know like you say that helps I guess with the long-term strategy of the race and uh, and then and you then being able to sort of sprint out at the end so from what you were saying it sounds like that's agreed up front before the race even starts that strategy yeah, so we go into each race with a plan. Um, that plan can evolve and change throughout the race, but um, we have a starting point of what we're, our goal is to achieve and how we expect to be able to achieve that. And on this day, our goal was for me to finish in the top 10. Right, okay. If I go back to the race again and, and look back, so we saw Nina's rise here, we've seen Emily's breakaway. One of the other things I noticed actually from when we were discussing before, was that at one stage you sort of um, start to take the lead um, and, and do your own sort of breakaway and, and it's quite early on you know there's quite a lot of distance left I think you mentioned it was around here um, and I noticed that in, in the stats in the sort of race review that you take the lead around here um, and you and you push up and a quote from Emily was that she sort of gave you the lead out into a sharp corner and a little climb um, from the race review so again, was that all planned? Is it planned for when that will happen? Um, and and how is how is the race up to that point helped you sort of take that lead and then push to the end? Yeah, like I said, we come in with a general plan and um, things will evolve a little bit more. 
throughout the race. Um, so in this particular race, um, Nina um, led me into that climb there. It's the Canariberg. So it's a fast yeah. downhill, huge fight into a right-hand turn. And no, it's not the point that the brace is going to break up, but it's the mm -hmm. point that if you're not at the front, you're not going to make that final final yeah. break. Um, so she helped me into that climb to go in, in, I think the top five wheels. And then you can see from then on that her ride becomes very steady. Um, and for a little while, my ride's still pretty steady. Yeah. Um, but the, if you look at the GPS, we're in very different positions. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and it's, um, yeah, very helpful to have teammates that are willing to do those kinds of things for you during the race. Yeah, I can imagine giving you that sort of advantage. Yeah, because you can see yourself sort of um, starting to move away here from, from the group and then the power profile there. Yeah, um, we, we catch Emily's group um, coming inside one of the, and think into the next climb. Right, okay. Um, so if we just uh, then again change this to sort of the final, um, the final sort of part of the race of that you know the last 10 20 30 kilometers you can really see that your profile here now is 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 um much greater than the rest of the team like you say emily's is quite steady and nina's is even less um one thing i did notice here is that Kristen's power just drops and then ends <laughs> i was wondering what 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 happened there what was there a loss of sort of information or yeah, unfortunately, she had to do a, a bike change at a pretty critical point in the race. Right. Um, so when she switched over bikes, um, I guess her power meter d didn't connect to the new com new computer. And, um, yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, because I, I guess, you know, I think um, myself, maybe, you know, I, I had assumed a lot of the, the information the sensors are actually on the riders, but they're actually on the bike as well. So if you change bike, you might lose that um, information from the race. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, this this shows this great push and, and what, when you look at the distribution of power um, and you look at your profile here, you can see you've got a lot more above 100%, whereas uh, the rest of the team, it's, it's sort of more to the left. And the heart rate as well, you can really see that, you know, your heart rate is much more pushed to the top. So it shows this sort of really intense ending I mean what what is the effort like there to sort of push there and, and you did make that top 10 finish which was what was great what, what's that like sort of having raced for so long with all that strategy to sort of push for that final run yeah I mean teammates helping you earlier in the race is what gives you that strength to have that extra fight yeah. I know that Nina and Emily and Kristen um have sacrificed their race to help me. So there was a moment where I almost didn't make that front group, but I was yeah. able to like have that last little dig um, to inspire me and to just want to do well for them and make their work show on paper that it was worth it. Um, yeah, no, that's, I think that's something that a lot of people don't appreciate is, is just how much it is an absolute team sport. Like you say, the, your team members, uh, you use the word sacrifice their race effectively to, so to give you the chance to push forward and then you're sort of inspired and then that's motivation for you to do that big finish. Yeah, it's, it's an incredible feeling. I, I remember after this race, just being in my room and just talking with my teammates and just, we were just all so excited that like yeah, yeah. what we had done and what we had achieved and yeah, yeah. just, to have people to share that with is, it's thrilling. Uh, uh, yeah, I can imagine, you know, it, it, like you said, it's such an iconic race. Um, I think it was near the end or the end of the season and quite what, what's been quite, a, I imagine, a very different season due to the current, you know, pandemic and things. And just to do that as a team must have been a great, great way to finish. Yeah, this was our last race of 2020. So, wow. Um, <laughs> Yeah, lots of memories, especially since I'm heading to do my first race for 2021. So this is getting me excited and ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's great because you've got your first race, um, like say this this weekend, um, and back with the team members. So, I mean that that insight and overview, I really appreciate that. I hope people who watch this really enjoy that as well. Um, 
I just want to thank you so much for taking your time to talk us through this and the insights. And as a data analyst, you know, I, I really love to see that the data we are seeing backs up the stories and the sort of uh, aspects of the race, but then to hear the sort of real reality of how you work as a team and how, what it means as a, a, a professional cyclist to do these things is great. Um, and for we will be making this dashboard available for people to actually try themselves and, and our aim, we hope, is to update it throughout the season with more information about the riders and everything. So I hope this becomes a really interesting um, asset for people to sort of come and follow the team and, and follow the riders. Um, so thank you very much, Lauren. Um, that was brilliant. And just end there and say goodbye. Yeah, thanks, Colin. <laughs> okay.